Hello again. Uh, today I'm going to be installing the Scythe Ninja on the AMD platform. I've completed all six coolers that I was planning to complete on the Intel platform with the i7-10700. Um, and I'll share those results with you a bit. This is kind of just a preview, but the Ryogen Tech Mega Halims did the worst. It is the smallest cooler. It passed my 65 watt test. 60 watt test. Did not pass the 70 watts. So it's a fanless, it's a 65 watt cooler. Next up, uh, these two performed pretty similarly actually. The one I'm installing today here on the AMD platform is the Ninja 5 from Scythe, and the Ryzen Tech t -Sys did pretty similarly. They passed 70 watts. They did not pass 80 watts, though. Then we have the next couple here. Uh, Thermal Right, Le Grand Macho, and the Fantex TC14PE. They both did a really good job. They passed the 80 watt test. They did not, however, pass the 90 watt test. This no fan CR95C was the only cooler here to pass the 90 watt test. So I'm going to make a separate video on all these results along with the AMD results. Um, that's kind of a preview of, of the full results, but I'm going to compile those and that's going to take some time. But um, overall, the no fan cooler still is just about the best cooler out there for fanless cooling. Um, but some of them came pretty close, so I'll share those results with you later on. The setup I'm using today includes the same fractal design case and I'm using the B550F from ASUS and the CPU I'm going to use here is the AMD Ryzen 7 Pro 4750G It's not very easy to find, it's not available for retail sale from most places, but you might be able to find one from eBay or AliExpress for a, a reasonable price. Less than 400 hopefully. The performance on the CPU is similar to the performance of the 3700X, but it includes integrated graphics and the graphics actually are pretty good it's comparable to a an Nvidia GT 1030 okay so I'll get on to the installation here and this cooler actually uses the stock AM4 backplate but I do need to remove these screws first as well as the clips. And then I'm going to have to hold this back plate in place. four spacers fit on top of those mounts. And, oops. These two brackets sit on top of those spacers. Ah, those are not the right screws. Oh, 
Então... And then I'll do the same thing on the bottom. Tighten it just a bit more here. This screw is pretty easy to install. I'm going to apply MX4 thermal paste. And spread it out evenly. The goal with spreading it is just to get a thin layer across the whole surface. Now with most of the AMD mounting mechanisms for these coolers, I'm not going to be able to rotate it as I please because it's asymmetrical here and it's only going to fit vertically. It's not going to be optimal for all of the coolers, but for this one in particular it actually doesn't really matter because it's a symmetric cooler, horizontally and vertically. Something is, oh, I had actually uh, made a bit of a mistake here. These are backwards. I've got to face this 180 and 180. Which 
just wasted a bit of time there. Now it should fit a bit better. You know what, I'm gonna take this back off and spread the paste a little more evenly. Okay, that's on there nicely now. Maybe I can make it a little bit tighter. And that's it. I don't think I'm going to do any more of these short CPU installation, cooler installation videos. For a while, I'm just going to compile all the results and make a full video out of it. That's going to take some time, so you can expect that later in November or maybe even sometime in December, but I'll get that out at some point. Thank you for watching. <laughs>